I remember the first time I laid eyes on the water wing. It was one of those magical moments where I'll always remember where I was and what I was doing. I was actually sitting right here where I am now and watching YouTube just like this, so it's not actually all that difficult to remember. But like a lot of people, I got pretty excited by the idea of a new mount that you could now ride and use to explore underwater. The possibilities seemed endless. This is... this is magnificent. Oh yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. But then later there's running and, and screaming. Yeah, I should have known better, because then I fought one for the first time. And the magic was gone, and the challenge was on. I find water wings to be one of the toughest enemies not just in the Burning Shores, but in all of the Horizon universe. But with this relatively simple three-step strategy, you'll be able to beat the water wings and their apex variants every single time. And hey, if you like this video, feel free to give me a like and subscribe to my channel. As a subscriber, this is pretty much what you can expect. Tips, tricks, and strategy for Horizon and other games with the occasional dry joke or bad meme sprinkled in. We try not to take ourselves too seriously around here, but what we do take seriously are the water wings and seamless segues. So let's jump in. Now first, let's go through and outline the overall strategy, and then I'll take you through a play-by-play -play where I put all the pieces together and complete the four Apex Water Wings Arena Challenge in just about two minutes. Now without a doubt, the thing that makes the water wings the most difficult is the fact that they're never alone. They're always in groups of either three or four, and it can be nearly impossible to take them on this way. So we need to find a way to take the other water wings out of the fight so we can focus on fighting them one on one. And the best option here is to use a rope caster. Now if you've seen any of my other videos, you know by now that I'm a fan of the rope caster. I know they don't typically get a lot of love, but I seriously can't imagine navigating the Burning Shores or even the arena without one. But I know that they can be tricky to use, so this part might take a little bit of practice. We do, however, have a couple of things that are working in our favor. For one, as a medium weight machine, water wings only take one rope to tie down, whereas heavyweight machines like the Bile Gut or the Slaughter Spine take two. We can also aim for the wings, which give us a nice large target. And the Burning Shores gave us the Rope Caster Expert skill, which gives us the ability to quickly re-tie down a machine once the original tie down state has deteriorated. Smoke Bombs can also be useful here, giving us a little space and a good opportunity to overdraw and aim the Rope Caster. Now once we have the machines tied down, we can move on to step 2, which is freezing the machine. I find Frost to probably be the most useful element in Horizon. I always make sure to have at least one weapon that specializes in Frost in my weapon wheel at all times. Frost is great for a couple of reasons. For one, when a machine is frozen, impact damage is increased, so we have the ability to deal greater damage. Second, when a machine is in the brittle state, they move slower, which gives you a bigger window to reposition yourself or just limit the machine's attacks. So once we have the machines tied down, we'll want to make sure to freeze them. Now non-Apex Water Wings also have chill water canisters on their back, which you can blow up to instantly trigger the brittle state. However, I wouldn't exactly recommend that. Blowing up the chill water canister is going to instantly deteriorate our tie-down status, which we want to keep going for as long as possible. So how do we freeze the machine without causing damage that will deteriorate the tie-down status? It's simple. Aim for an armor plate. I like to aim for these big armor plates the Water Wings have right on the front of their wings. Hitting an armor plate will build up elemental free status on the water wing without doing a lot of damage, so our tie down status will remain intact. And once we've got the machine tied down and frozen, we can focus on step 3, inflicting maximum damage. My weapon of choice for maximum damage is the Blast Forge Bolt Blaster along with the Sustained Burst Weapon Technique. I have my Bolt Blaster loaded up with impact damage coils which will get a buff from the elemental free status and close range damage coils. I'll also be triggering my Valor Surge, Ranged Master. I find that with this combination, even on Ultra Hard, I can take out non-Apex and Apex variant Water Wings in just one round. Okay, so now that we have our strategy, let's summarize. Step 1. Isolate the Water Wings by tying them down. Step 2. Freeze them. Step 3. Focus on maximum damage. Now let's put all the pieces together and see how it looks in a real example. 
For this example, I'm going to be using the Apex Water Wing Arena Challenge because it's four Apex Water Wings in a relatively small space, which I find to be the hardest example of a Water Wing fight that I've found. So if we can make this strategy work here, we can make it work anywhere. Now when I start the fight here, I want to make sure first that I've got my rope caster equipped so that I'm just ready to go. Um, but also when I glide in, I'm trying to glide all the way over to the three water wings that are the farthest. Uh, since they're grouped together, I felt like that would probably be the easiest way to kind of get them tied down quickly. And then popping a smoke bomb is always a good idea. It causes them to be confused and just gives you a little bit more of a buffer so that you can aim the rope caster and overdraw it which you should overdraw the rope caster all the way to make sure that you are able to pierce the armor plates i feel like that's one of the reasons why rope casters are typically pretty tricky to use is because people try to just shoot them like they would their bow but you really need to hold down the button and um, overdraw them and then once i've got them all tied down i want to work on uh, freezing them as fast as possible. I use the triple notch weapon technique with my hunter bow and then I'll trigger my valor surge which here is ranged master and then I'll move right in with the sustained burst weapon technique. And as I mentioned before I've got my bolt blaster equipped with uh, close range damage coils and impact damage coils. So then I'll move to the second water wing. Again I'm trying to aim for the armor place right on the front of its wing there because I don't want to damage it but I do want to do the freeze status and I found that aiming for the back of the water wing will typically do more damage than hitting it from the front so I'm able to take out both of those first two apex water wings in pretty quick time again using the triple notch weapon technique with the frost arrows aiming for the armor plate I'll take a stamina potion there because when my bolt blaster is equipped, I want to use sustained burst. And I'll move around to the back. And we're still doing pretty good there. Uh, the water wing is still tied down. He's frozen, so I'll trigger my Valor Surge again. And then I can move right into the sustained burst. And I'm able to take out this third one pretty quickly. And then moving on to the last one, immediately switch back into uh, Frost Arrows. I want to freeze them as quickly as possible since my Valor Surge is still going. I start to lose the tie down status there, but I'm able to take advantage of the Rope Caster Expert skill, uh, which gives me the ability to just kind of quickly retie it down, reload my Bolt Blaster, and my Valor Surge just wore off, but uh, it didn't matter. I'm still able to do enough damage to take out that Water Wing pretty quickly. And there it is, my three-step strategy for taking down the Water Wing and the Apex Water Wing. I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Or let me know what your tips and tricks are for taking down the Water Wing or some of the other big bads in the Horizon universe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.